Hello, welcome to this short pre-recorded webinar for parents and carers of children who are about to take our leadership course. This is relevant for you whether your child's taking a five-day version of our course, a four-day or even a three-day version of the course. And in this webinar, I will be talking through what we do at Role Models, why we believe life skills are so important, specifically what is the leadership course all about, what will your child be getting up to, and then importantly at the end I'll be offering some ideas for how you at home can help support their leadership skill development. So to introduce myself properly first of all, I'm Louise Trahan, Director of Character Education at Role Models. My role on the team is I help create the content of all of our courses and sessions and my background is in teaching. So I was a primary school teacher for 12 years and I spent five years as a senior deputy head teacher in an independent school. I then moved on from education and trained in coaching and I'm now a qualified coach working with parents, young people and children, really helping them be the best version of themselves and that's exactly what our courses are all about at Role Models. You'll see my email address here on the slide. Please don't hesitate to get in contact with me if you have any questions at all about the leadership course, uh, about the content or anything else. So for those of you who might not be familiar with Role Models, we are an impact-driven education provider and we focus on the types of life skills that promote social and emotional well-being and what we like to call dynamic thinking. And we really believe that these types of skills help young people thrive rather than just survive. And we know they make a difference when it comes to home, school and also their future. So thinking about jobs and the future workplace, but also just being life ready. We complement traditional academic education by delivering our online and offline courses for children between the ages of three to 15 years old. And the types of skills we're focusing on include leadership, such as the course your child has signed up to do, but also confidence, resilience, creative problem solving, collaboration and a growth mindset. Just briefly thinking about why these schools, why these skills, sorry, are important, we think they have three main benefits. Firstly, we know they impact mental health and well-being. If we think about what we want for our children, we want success for them, but we also want them to be happy. And these types of skills we're talking about, confidence and resilience, leadership skills, these are the ones that help your child achieve happiness, satisfaction, a healthy view of themselves, and also to be able to develop healthy relationships with others. Now, these things have always been important, but become particularly important during or post a global pandemic. We also know these skills make a difference for your child's future. If we think about being job ready and work ready and what employers are really looking for in the workplace, we know that um, academic qualifications and exam grades are not enough on their own. They are looking for young people who are confident, who have the communication skills, who can work effectively with other people, who can think creatively, um, use innovation to be resilient. And these types of skills also thirdly impact academic attainment. This is not um, an either or choice here. We know that these life skills actually positively impact your child's academic potential. You know, if we think about resilience in the classroom and confidence, if your child is ready to take risks, make mistakes, to be able to um, embrace that learning journey, then they're going to be um, much more equipped to challenge themselves in a healthy way. Just following on from that, if we look at the 10 skills that the World Economic Forum has highlighted as those that are really needed in order to thrive, um, you know, in the workplace and in the future, if we just have a look at that list, it's no surprise that you see the types of soft skills that are important, problem solving, critical thinking, emotional intelligence. And in our leadership course, we really focus on that ability to understand ourselves and each other to be able to work effectively together. 
Now, at Role Models, we focus on four areas in particular. Leadership being one of them, which is what your, your child is going to be doing with us. But we also focus on resilience, creative problem solving and collaboration. And these skills have been chosen because they form part of the learning and innovation skills and also life and career skills. So if we think about the leadership course in particular now, the types of things that your child will be covering with us, whether they're doing um, a full version five day course or a four or a three, include the following. We like to think of leadership as everyday leadership. So we're not going to necessarily take your child and just talk about them becoming captain of a team or the next prime minister or president, we're helping them understand how do we use everyday opportunities to positively impact others around us. And part of that is understanding our own strengths. Now, from my experience with working with young people, they can be very ready to talk to you about their targets, about their areas for development, and less ready to identify their strengths and what makes them special. So we do a lot of work on helping them see those and then beginning to think, now I know what they are, how can I use them to lead brilliantly? Am I coming from a strengths-based approach? You know, am I using my humour effectively? Am I using my creativity? We also look at leadership language. Um, how does it feel when we're leading others? And what impact can our language have? The way we say things, our tone, our delivery style. Um, and we have a really good discussion about, actually, it's often not what we say, it's how we say it and how it's delivered. We look at our impact on others, our actions and what you know outcomes they can have. And then in particular, we look at concepts including empathy. What is empathy? Um, respect, trust. And we also touch on a growth mindset. Now, we go into a lot more detail about this concept in our resilience course, but we also include it in this leadership course, because in order to be a good leader, we have to be applying a growth mindset. Part of the experience that your child will be taking part in is a real special one because of our role models. And we're incredibly lucky to have a number of, of role models who work with us in our offline courses, and they are passionate, inspirational young people. Many of them are teachers or ex-teachers. Um, many of them have you know, qualifications from top universities. We have performers, we have actors, and they are really experienced in connecting and building rapport with your child. They will also be writing a report, an individual report for your, your child, and that will be broken down into what progress they've seen throughout the course, and also, most importantly, suggestions about where to take it next. How do they feel your child could continue to develop their leadership style? So I encourage you during the, the course that your child's taking part in, do talk to the, to the role models, introduce yourself, um, get some ver verbal feedback from how your child has, has got on. So to give you some examples of the activities and depending on how many days your child is doing with us in the leadership course, they might not cover all of these challenges, but they'll certainly cover some of them. So the goal challenge, this is a very hands on active task where in a group we ask the children to construct a small football goal and we give them the pieces um, all unattached and somebody in the group is assigned the leader or sometimes there might be two leaders. Everybody else in the group is blindfolded and they have to lead their group to construct this football goal together. Now, as you can imagine, this takes great thought and empathy to understand what would it feel like for my teammates that I'm directing if they can't see? I've suddenly got to become really particular with my language, my instructions and direction, um, and it's a, it's a good laugh too. <laughs> Super strengths is where we get them to reflect on what their top strengths are. And to show you this picture here, we get the children to make super capes, super me capes. And in a graffiti style, they cover this cape in all of their top strengths and attributes. 
So you might be able to see in some of the pictures here, we've got children who have written, you know, actually, I'm incredibly kind as a person. I am resilient or humour is actually a real big strength of mine. You know, I make my friends laugh. I am supportive. I'm helpful. I'm creative. I'm great at fixing stuff. And it's about really boosting their self-worth and their self-esteem. The hot orb challenge is another tricky one. And by the way, many of the tasks your child will be doing are designed in particular to be very hard because what we want to do is we want to put your child in that place of feeling stuck and challenged um, and it's all about how we react to that and as a team can we remain positive can we really apply that growth mindset and believe in ourselves to do it and as a leader can I find that the way to motivate my, and support my team so the hot orb challenge looks like this um, effectively, we've got a hot orb, which is a ball balanced on a cone, sitting very carefully inside a cap. And attached to this cap, we've got pieces of string. And each person in the team is holding one of those pieces of string. And the challenge is to move the ball off from the cone and into a bucket, which is placed to the side. Now, as you can imagine, this is really challenging because in order to make this work, Everybody in the team has to be holding their string tight and moving in coordination. So this task always takes lots of attempts. There's frustration um, and it's a really good one for applying that resilient attitude. The sandwich challenge, another hands on. All of our courses are always based on active learning. Um, this is where the children are challenged to make a sandwich as a group. Um, several of the team are blindfolded and one of the members of the group is the leader. And I should mention throughout the, the week or, or three or four days, um, your child will always get a chance to be a leader. We rotate that round throughout the course across the different activities and challenges that we're doing. And then the healthy living and well-being facts. Um, on all of our courses, we ask our role models each day to share a quick fact or thought with the children to do with well-being. Now that could be physical well-being, mental well-being, emotional well-being. It's nothing to do with leadership, but we feel our role models are perfectly placed to be able to have these conversations. So it could be something around why is sleep so important? Um, what is the benefit of staying hydrated each day and drinking water? Um, what happens when we do too much screen time just before bed? Um, so do ask your child what was covered by the role model each day. And often parents tell us these are the exact same conversations we're having at home. But yet when the role model mentioned it to them, um, you know, my child's been really, really, it, it resonated with them. Um, and I think that's the power of the connection that the role models have. So I promised some ideas uh, to share with you as to how you can support your child at home. This first slide is all about developing a growth mindset. And this is when we come from a place of understanding that our ability, our talent and um, intelligence is not fixed. We have the capability to get better at things and we understand that that's linked to the amount of effort and time and practice that we put in. So how can we develop this, this holy grail of, of mindset within our children? Very easy thing is to emphasize the effort your child puts in rather than just focusing on the outcome. So this might sound like rather than just uh, giving your, your praise and feedback to, wow, fantastic, you got 10 out of 10, or wow, you won the race, or you, you know, you came first in this thing. It, we can recognise those, but let's just balance it also by saying, wow, you got 10 out of 10, but you know what I'm also most proud of is the perseverance. You know, you practised every night for that test. That's what I'm most proud of. Or you found that really tricky in the middle and you didn't give up. So finding ways to recognise and give praise to the attributes rather than just the success of the outcome. 
As parents and educators, we can also model and share our own examples of a growth mindset. So just being mindful of how we react. You know, do they hear us say, OK, I can't do this right now, but I can get better at this. I know if I keep practicing and keep trying, um, I can make progress. Also embracing mistakes. If we want our child to do that, we have to model that too. So let's talk about the mistakes we're making. Let's talk about why that produces a really great learning moment um, rather than fear the idea of making mistakes. Recognising and praising your child's progress is also really important. Many children, I think, struggle to see the progress they make. So this might sound like us stepping in and saying, I can see you're not there yet with this piece of work. I can see you've not mastered it. But let's just remember, look how far you've come in the last half an hour or look how much easier you're finding it than you did last week. So we can just hold up that mirror and say, look, you, you're making small steps in the right direction. So don't give up just yet. And letting them struggle and fail, I think possibly one of the hardest things to do as a parent. But if we really want them to develop this resilience um, and that type of mindset, we have to be ready to put them in situations of adversity. Um, and if we allow them to do that, actually what we're doing is we're building up their self-efficacy their ability to believe that oh, I can do this, I can be successful, I can get through that difficult time, and that will actually give confidence. And then encourage them to step outside of their comfort zone. Um, we go into a lot more detail about this in our resilience course, but at home you can be having those conversations, you know, you've got this thing coming up next week, I can see you're a bit unsure about it, but let's just talk about why that's a good thing that you're going to be stepping outside of what feels comfortable for you. And talk about when, when you do that too. If you would like to know more information about a growth mindset, I have included a link here at the bottom of this slide, a really helpful video that illustrates the difference between a growth mindset and a fixed one. And then building on that further, I've got some ideas specifically for looking at this emotional intelligence and these leadership qualities. Part of what we're focusing on the leadership course is building up that empathy. How ready are we to understand and connect with what other people are experiencing and feeling? Now, a great way of doing that is any opportunity to encourage your child to step into somebody else's shoes and consider what are they feeling and do I know what that feels from my experience? Now, books, movies, films, TV, any type of experience like that are a great way to do it. Um, my second point here is limit screen time. Now, I know screen time has a place uh, and it can be positive, absolutely. But I suppose the more time we're spending on screens, the less time we're spending face to face, connecting, interacting with other people and learning from that as an experience. And if we want to create this this leader in your child, they need to be having that that people time, that communication, learning how to work with others. Helping to build your child's self-image. I'm a big believer that children strive to become the person that they think other people believe them to be. Uh, and what I mean by that is very easily you can build that self-image for them. So let them hear you say, you know, you, I know you, you're somebody who thinks of others. You are somebody who supports those that you're working with. And the more they're hearing this, the more they then become it. Other ideas for perspective taking, board games are brilliant for this. So whether it's chess or any type of other game where your child has to really stop and think about what the other person, the opponent is thinking and doing. We can also model our own empathetic reactions, responses and approach. So I think we often miss such great opportunities to speak out loud. And this could be as simple as saying out loud to your child, you know, I, I bumped into my friend today. She seemed a little bit down. I'm going to give her a call this evening and just check that everything is OK. You know, I just I got this sense that she wasn't feeling too great and I want to just check in and have that conversation by 
talking through that empathetic response, our children are hearing it and and understanding why that's important. And then I'd also highly recommend rather than asking our children, what did you do today when they come back from school? I'm sure you get very little back, <laughs> nothing, um, is to just mix up that question. So rather than what did you do today, it could be something like, what did you do today that you feel good about? What did you do that made you laugh? What was surprising about your day? Um, what did you do that made a difference to somebody else? Or what did someone do that made a difference to you in your day? And those types of questions often drive connection and and result in a much more healthy discussion. Um, but also it helps your child reflect on connection. And then lastly, I'd highly recommend any opportunities you have for encouraging your child to share their opinion um, and develop their their independence as well. Um, and room for disagreement. You know, a lot of what we talk about in the leadership language focus on the course is, well, actually, is it OK to say that's not good enough or I need more from you or I really need you to do your job properly? And actually, it's OK to say no. It's OK to say I disagree, but it's about how we say it. And it's about that connection that we already have with those people in our team. So allowing for that disagreement even within your family you know do you agree with your brother or your sister or I'm really interested to know do you have a different opinion because if you do that's okay and making it really obvious that their opinion is valued you know what do you think could be the solution to this now one of the things that is a real challenge for courses like ours and any type of learning is we want your child to come and have a great time but we also want these skills to be embedded and we all know what it's like. We can go on a course, we can have a fantastic experience, but then we go back to our habits, our ways of being, and it's not necessarily embedded. So what can we do about that? Well, we like to do the following things to try and get around this. You'll receive a daily email from the role model leading the group. And in that email, they will summarize all of the day and the activities. Now that serves as a great way for you to connect with your child when they come home. Oh, I've read from your role model that you did this today. Tell me more about this challenge. There should also be some photos attached, which will give you a visual too. As I mentioned, the, um, the role model will be completing a report on your child. So do use that to gain an insight. And, you know, it might even be something that you want to share with your child's class teacher. Um, I think it would be a great resource for them, too. At the end of the course, you will receive some top tips. Again, further ideas for how you can develop their leadership at home. And we will be sending through some follow up videos for your child to watch. These are quick videos just saying, hey, do you remember when you talked about empathy? Do you remember when you talked about this? How are you using that now you've finished the course? And we space those videos out. So the first video they'll receive two weeks after the course, four weeks, then six weeks. One of the activities they'll do is they write a letter at the end of the course to themselves. And this is to their future self. What have I learned about being a leader and how do I hope I'm using it in the future? We then hold on to those letters and post them out to the children a little while after the course is finished. Again, just another way of a reminder. Oh, I remember role models. I remember what we talked about being a leader. Finally, all of those who complete the course receive a passport and a certificate. And in that passport, it details the key skills that they've been developing throughout the leadership course. Finally, a few books to recommend to you. Um, if you are wanting to help your child develop their growth mindset, You Are Awesome by Matthew Saeed is a great one. A couple there about developing confidence and the one in yellow is actually more for you as parents and carers which focuses on how to just develop that empathetic approach in your child lastly some specific information um, you should be you will receive a pre-course email before your child's course begins which will outline specific information about the venue 
about the times and anything else that you need to know, uh, you know, the address, where to park. We use multiple different venues, so that will be specific to the email you receive. You will have also filled in a pre-course form. And if you haven't done that before the course starts, we will be in touch uh, with you to um, encourage you to, to fill that in. Our course times tend to be 10 in the morning till 3. We often offer extended daycare too. And please do note that your child will need to bring in their own lunch, nut free, and a water bottle. And then depending on the time of year that your child's doing their course with us, making sure they've got suitable clothing. So whether that's a sun hat, sun cream, or a coat, and drop off and pick up. Uh, the role models will be there to chat with you, but um, we do ask that you drop your child off and then leave them with us for the duration of the day rather than stay on site, just to allow for that real independent experience. So I really hope this webinar has been helpful to give you more information about us, life skills, and specifically the leadership course. As I mentioned, if you have any questions, please do get in touch. And we really hope that your child has a fantastic experience with us. Thank you.